This is Awesome Astronomy. Hello, this is Ralph and Paul from Awesome Astronomy. For a full month of astronomy news, views, interviews and answers to listeners' questions, go to www.awesomeastronomy.com or look for Awesome Astronomy on iTunes, Twitter and Facebook. In this, the first of our monthly extra episodes will bring you a guide to the skies in the month ahead and give you a beginner's challenge to get stuck into. So, February. Cold winter nights, but getting shorter all the time, and by month's end we'll be getting back to dark skies that are only 10 hours long. But before we explore the best on offer in February, let's spend a minute or two on that beginner's challenge to help our younger and less experienced listeners learn their way around the sky and give them something to look out for. Yeah, first up, let's take a look for the most brilliant and obvious constellation in the sky at this time of year, Orion the Hunter. If you look south, as soon as it's dark, any time this month you'll see the line of three bright stars that represent Orion the Hunter's belt. These belt stars are known from left to right as Alnitak, Alnilam and Mintaka. In the region to the left of Alnitak, the left-hand belt star, sits the beautiful Flame Nebula, popular among amateur imagers, and the Horsehead Nebula, made famous by NASA and ESA's Hubble Space Telescope. But we're not going there for this simple taster. We're going to pull back out of the belt stars a little and look into the sword that hangs from Orion's belt. In clear skies, you'll easily make out three stars that point downward, and the middle star will look a little fuzzy, because that's not a star at all, or rather... It's not one star, but a collection of stars in the centre of the naked eye visible gas cloud that's condensing to create new stars. This is Messier 42, or the Great Nebula in Orion, the nearest star-forming region to our own solar system, one of the grandest objects in the night sky, and one of the easiest to spot. Take a look with the naked eye throughout the month, or delve deeper with a pair of binoculars, or a telescope to find the trapezium star cluster, and reveal those tendrils of gas illuminated by the stars they created but we're not done there. There's much more in Orion to enjoy. These stars and nebulae are framed by four bright stars. In the top left is the swollen red giant Betelgeuse. Top right is the nearest of these framing stars, Bellatrix, eight times larger than the sun and four times hotter. Bottom right is the brightest, yet most distant of the quartet, the blue supergiant Rigel. Finally, bottom left is safe, Another blue supergiant as much as 22 times the size of the sun. All these combine to make Orion perhaps the jewel of the winter constellations, and no evening's observing or imaging is complete without at least a scan of this region. So let us know how you get on observing this wonder of the winter skies by tweeting your observations and any images to Awesome Astro Pod, or show them off on our Facebook group that you can find by typing Awesome Astronomy into Facebook. Now, moving on to the planets. Jupiter's now a month past opposition, but is still dominating the sky. Easily located in Gemini, the king of the planets will be giving us great views of cloud detail and the movements of the four Galilean moons. With long nights, you can witness an entire Jupiter rotation, taking in the great red spot, track storms and those enigmatic barges, as well as watch the movements of the four brightest moons. With Io and Europa so close to Jupiter, you will definitely be able to track their movements in a few hours observing, and of course, night after night, the pattern of the moon changes. Here is one of the first pieces of concrete evidence that our Earth was not at the centre of the universe, so do take time to enjoy one of history's most important and beautiful discoveries. And of course, with Jupiter being so well presented still, just a month past opposition, an opportunity to image the gas giant can't be missed for any experienced imagers or intrepid observers. If you have a steady telescope mount and a webcam with a nose piece adapter such as the 2Cam or the Philips SPC900 or a DSLR camera on video mode and a T-ring adapter to attach it to your scope, these methods will let you record movies onto a laptop that you can run through free specialist software such as Registax or Autostackert to create super resolution images revealing Jupiter's moons and the swirling clouds and storms in the planet's upper atmosphere. And don't be phased by this astro trickery if you're new to it, because our website at awesomeastronomy.com has loads of simple step-by-step guides to get you started or improve your technique. Just look for tutorials or webcam imaging tutorials on the homepage. And this really is an opportunity not to be missed, as Jupiter won't be as high in the sky or as close to Earth as it currently is for the best part of a decade. Then the other evening planet visiting our skies in February is Mercury. It's difficult to find, and many amateur astronomers have never seen it, Look low down in the sky after sunset in the first part of the month. It's presenting a 47% phase, and on the 1st we'll be sharing the sky with a thin crescent moon. Early risers will be treated to a parade of planets across the southern sky through February. 
with Mars, Saturn and Venus lining up across the ecliptic before the sun rises. Mars is reaching a decent altitude at last and is rising in the east before midnight. Still not an impressive disk, but larger scopes might now pick up some detail and hints of the polar cap. Saturn rises next and is always impressive even this far from opposition. While the ring world is going to be low in the sky for northern observers for many years, the angle of the rings is very impressive and well worth a look. Venus is the bright morning star this month and is blazing away as the brightest object in the sky after the moon and the sun, at magnitude over minus four. Looking through a scope reveals a bright planetary disk that through the month is growing in illumination from 13 to 35 percent. It's difficult to find any cloud detail on Venus, but those with colour filters might have some luck. The moon has no new phases this month, as new moons fall on the 31st of January and the 1st of March. The moon sets a romantic tone though by reaching its full phase on February the 14th. This means that dark sky observing is best penciled in for the beginning and the end of the month, as the moon moves out of the way, while lunar observers will be getting in their time around the middle two weeks of February. And as another treat, why not see if you can find the landing site of the Chinese Chang'e 3 lander and rover? From this distance, no telescope will let you see the rover or its tracks, unfortunately. Only NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter around the Moon can do that. But you can gaze deep into the Bay of Rainbows, where Chang'e 3 sits on the western promontory to the Moiré Imbrium that looks a little bit like Mickey Mouse's ear. The Moiré Imbrium and Bay of Rainbows are both beautiful to observe just past first quarter and just before last quarter moon. This month's constellations and deep sky recommendations are the constellations that follow behind Orion, Monoceros and Cancer. Monoceros is a rather indistinct constellation, representing the mythical oddity that is the unicorn. Despite being a faint constellation, Monoceros is hiding wondrous treasure for both visual observers and imagers. There is the heart-shaped M50 open cluster that is easily found in binoculars or a small telescope. The Rosette Nebula, a vast cloud a hundred light years across and so named for its rosette-like petals. There is the Christmas tree cluster and its associated cone nebula, NGC 2264, as well as the small but stunning NGC 2254 open cluster and the Hubble's variable nebula, a nebula and star interacting that may be in an early stage of planetary system evolution. Cancer, like Monoceros, is quite a faint constellation with no great standout stars. Certainly this patch of sky looks rather barren between Orion and Leo, but Cancer contains two gems in the form of M44 and M67. M44, the Beehive Cluster, or Praseep, is a close open cluster of around 50 stars and very obvious to the naked eye, as a nebulous patch in darker skies. It is thought to be of a similar age and origin to the Hyades in Taurus. M67 is smaller due to distance but a larger cluster in population, appearing as a concentrated cluster of at least 500 stars. It is an interesting oddity in its age, with most open clusters having ages in millions of years before dispersing. M67 is at least 3 billion years old, and maybe as much as 5 billion. And again, like Orion, this is where the winter skies provide for some excellent quarry for the imagers. With Monoceros and Cancer treating us to nebulae and star clusters that benefit from long exposure photography without breaking the bank, both the Rosette Nebula in Monoceros and the Beehive Cluster in Cancer are so large that only the smaller scopes can fit them fully into view of the sensor and can therefore be imaged without even using a scope at all. A DSLR camera attached to a tracking mount with exposure times of 30 seconds to a minute should reveal this nebula and cluster very nicely. And if you do get any images or you want to share your observations, let us all know about it on our Facebook group. Just look for Awesome Astronomy on Facebook. And next month, we'll have the skies in March. Now, don't forget to take a look at our Sky Guide episodes on YouTube, where we'll have video accompaniments to improve the visual experience. And the main show is, as always, on the first of the month. So download or subscribe to the main show in a few days' time. And for now, it's goodbye from Cydonia Base. Awesome Astronomy is produced by Ralph Wilkins, Paul Hill, Damian Phillips and John Wildridge and is free to distribute for educational purposes. Music is courtesy of Star Salzman. For more astronomy news, views, help and advice, visit our website at www.awesomeastronomy.com You can join in the astronomy discussion on our Facebook group and you can follow us on Twitter 
at Awesome Astro Pod. We invite your questions to read out on the show. You can send them to us via Facebook, Twitter, or by email at the show at awesomeastronomy.com. We thank you very much for listening from Cydonia Base. End of transmission.